Hey guys, Zot here. With Phase 1 being well underway and Phase 2 bringing the much awaited honor system, PvP is going to be taking the forefront for most people. And with the abundance of PvE pre raid bisless out there, there just isn't much information for PvP pre raid bis gear. So, welcome to exactly that. We cover stat priority and then what pieces of gear you should be looking to obtain, along with where and how you get them. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at Warlocks. Warlock is one of the strongest classes in the game in small skirmishes and also 1v1, having good crowd control and also passive damage coming from their damage over time effects, as well as being incredibly tanky due to Soul Link. In this video, we're going to be focusing our gear and stat priorities around the currently stronger Soul Link spec you see here. The other variation is the Destro Nuke spec, but currently due to limitations, it's just a lot weaker. Overall, your stat priority is going to look like this, but let's delve into more detail on why. That way, replacing gear will be a little easier, as you'll know the reasons for gear being good or bad. So our first stat priority is going to be Stamina. Stamina is amongst the strongest stats in PvP for every single class, and Warlock in specific favours it the most. Stamina is the best defensive stat you can get. Higher health pool simply means the longer you can survive, and the harder it gets for enemies to take you down. Higher stamina also means you're able to life tap more and get more mana. In terms of value, one stamina equates to 10 health. Spell damage is next up on our priority list. The more spell damage you have, the more damage you deal. Simple. Shadow damage is of course going to be the best, as with this spec almost all of your damage is coming from your damage over time effects or shadow spells, and in phase 1 plus shadow damage is relatively easy to come by, with Scholomance and Strat on dead side both dropping some very good items. After that is going to be spell hit. Now this is so low on this priority list for a few reasons. First is due to our spec picking up 2 out of 5 in Suppression, giving your Affliction spells a 4% chance to hit. This means a large amount of your spells are already hit capped in PvP, as 3% is the required amount to be capped against level 60 targets, as spells will always have a 1% chance to miss regardless of your hit rating. This means it's only your Destro nukes like Immolate, Shadowburn, etc that are going to require that extra hit chance, and with how hard it is to obtain hit pre-raid, it's often not worth the sacrifice on pieces of gear this early into Classic. Next on the list is going to be Intellect. Why this is again so low down on the list compared to most casters is that Warlocks don't really heavily rely on their mana pool. Their spells are not that mana intensive and with abilities like Drain Mana and Life Tap, you can easily gain mana back, which again is why we go for the higher health pool. One point of Intellect gives you 15 mana and 60 intellect also then gives you 1% critical strike. And our last stat worth mentioning is going to be critical strike. Now, this is last on our priority list because in classic, damage over time effects cannot crit. And in PvP, a lot of your damage is going to be from dots. However, this stat isn't totally useless as Shadow Bolt and the initial damage of Immolate and even your Shadow Burn can all deal some very nasty crits. Alright, so with all of that in mind, let's take a look at the best in slot gear you can get right now for PvP. Bear in mind, this is pre-raid phase 1.5 gear, so includes all dungeons and the newly released Dire Mall. But to remain up to date with this list, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Starting from the top and working our way down, we first got Helmet. For this, it's going to be either the Crimson Felt Hat, providing you with 8 to Intellect, Stamina and also Spirit, along with a massive plus 30 to all damage. Or if you're an Engineer, an alternative option is going to be the Green Lens of Shadow Wrath. This helmet has some more Stamina and some extra Shadow Damage. To obtain the Crimson Felt Hat, you're going to have to venture into Strathole, and more specifically the Undead side of the instance, as this drops from Magistrate Barthelas, one of the later bosses inside of the instance. However, you can pull this boss instantly in a well-coordinated group when going through the side entrance. 
So moving down a slot, the next item is going to be neck piece. And for this, we're going to be after the Anastari Heirloom, a neck providing 15 stamina along with a pretty substantial 13 spell damage. So this neck has our two most favored stats when it comes to PvP. To get yourself one of these perfectly itemized necks, it's going to be Strat on Dead Side once more, where you'll have to slay Baroness Anastari. She is one of the three bosses protecting the ziggurats you need to clear in order to reach the final boss Baron Riven Dare. Once you slay her, she has about a 17% chance to drop this neck. Now, shoulders are up next, and for these, we're going to be after the Dreadwalker Mantle. These shoulders have a whopping 19 stamina and also 9 intellect, and even 13 shadow damage. Again, high stamina and shadow damage, exactly what you're looking for from a PvP item. Coming from inside of Scholomance, they drop from the first non-optional boss, Rattlegore, whom you can find atop of a bone pile in the basement. Rattlegore has quite a large drop table, and these shoulders only have about a 12% chance to drop, but for sure worth farming. Now for Cloak, the best option you'll be able to get for PvP is going to be the Deep Woodlands Cloak. This cloak provides a large amount of intellect, as well as stamina and some spell damage, so everything we're looking for. However, the drawback is it's only obtainable by the Horde. The Deep Woodlands Cloak is a reward from the Elite Quest in the Hinterlands, and requires you to kill Vile Priestess Hex and her minions. Now, these elites are in their mid-40s, so can be soloed at level 60 with ease, if you didn't pick this cloak up whilst leveling. Alliance, however, has a bit of a weaker alternative, in the form of the Blood Moon Cloak. This cloak provides a huge boost to stamina, but doesn't have any spell damage. The Blood Moon Cloak comes from the penultimate boss inside of Upper Blackrock Spire, who is a giant core hound adequately named the Beast. Moving on, we've got Chest Up next, and for this, we've got Robe of the Void. Now, this is your best in slot robe when it comes to PvP and also PvE for some time, down to its perfect stats. 14 stamina, a huge boost to your spell damage, and even the added ability to heal your pet. To obtain this robe, however, is not going to be cheap. First, you'll have to either farm the pattern off the final boss in Scholomance, Dark Master Gandlin, or buy it off the auction house for a small fee. Again, after that, you're going to have to farm the materials to craft it, or again, purchase them from the auction house but for sure worth the effort it takes to get, as this robe, as mentioned, is this in both PvP and even PvE. Moving down, we've got Braces up next. Now, this is our first item coming from the newly released Dire Maul instance, and that's going to be the Sublime Wrist Guards. These braces are the only braces pre-raid having any form of bonus to plus spell damage and healing, which makes them heavily sought after for any caster. They have a high amount of intellect, and even some stamina and spirit, combined with the plus 12 to damage and healing. These braces have a small chance to drop, as mentioned in Dire Maul, from either Guard Moldor or Guard Slipkick inside of Dire Maul North. Next up, we've got Gloves, and for these, there is only one option for Warlocks, and that's going to be Foul Cloth Gloves. These gloves are insane when it comes to Warlocks, and have 9 stamina and a huge plus 33 to shadow damage. So, that's our two highest priority stats once again. These gloves are made by tailors and require 12 bolts of rune cloth, 20 foul cloth, 6 demonic runes, and 8 essence of undeath. Whilst a little pricey, the foul cloth gloves are extremely worth parting your gold for. So, with this in mind, an easier and cheaper up to obtain alternative is going to be the hands of power. Despite the lack of stamina, the spell damage provided is going to best any other gloves pre-raid, apart from the Foul Cloth gloves. These easier to obtain gloves are from Quartermaster Zigris inside of Lower Blackrock Spire. Now our next piece of armour is going to be Belt. For both PvE and PvP, there is one Belt every single caster wants, and that's of course going to be the Banfox Sash. This belt is so incredibly strong, as not only is it perfectly itemized with stamina, intellect, and spell damage, but on top of that provides you with 1% hit. As mentioned, hit is incredibly hard to come by, and any hit you can get without heavily sacrificing your gear is insane. To obtain this belt, it's going to be off to Blackrock Depths, and to the arena, as this sash drops from Ock for the Breaker, 
one of six potential bosses inside the Ring of Law. If you're luckily enough to get this Ogre boss, he has a 1 in 3 chance of dropping this belt. Next up are going to be legs. Now again for these, they're the same as for PvE. All casters want these legs. I'm of course talking about the Sky Shroud leggings. 8 stamina, 8 intellect and a huge amount of spell damage. These legs have it all. The Sky Shroud leggings drop from the first boss in Lower Blackrock Spire, which is an ogre named High Lord Omak, at about a 14% drop rate. As he's the first boss and relatively easy to farm, you can often find groups just farming him for these legs alone. Finally, our last piece of armour for this Biss list is going to be Boots, in which we're going to be wanting Maleki's Foot Wraps, 9 in, 9 stamina and a huge plus 27 damage to shadow spells. These boots are perfect for PvP, and to get them you're going to have to once again head off to Strat on Deadside, where they drop similar to the amulet from one of the three bosses in front of the ziggurats you need to clear in order to reach the final boss. This time you'll be wanting to slay Maleki the Pallid. Now for rings, you've got a few options depending on your wealth. The best ring you can get for both slots is going to be two Underworld Bands. However, these are very expensive on the Auction House. They provide 14 Shadow Damage and 10 Stamina. For its level, the ring is absolutely absurd. To get two of these, your best bet is just simply buying them off the Auction House, as they're a random BOE epic world drop, so you can't target farm them. If you, however, don't have the gold to throw on this expensive ring, there is two cheaper alternatives. First is the Blood of the Martyr. This ring is insane for survivability. 15 stamina on one ring is insane, and on top of that, it's even got very high amount of intellect. So, just very good when it comes to PvP, and easy to obtain. And our second option is going to be the Cyclopean Band, providing a mixture of stats including high stamina and intellect, and a small amount of spell damage on top of that. To obtain the Blood of the Martyr, it's going to be off to Strathholm. First, you're going to need to clear the Lib inside, all the way up to the final boss. Just before his final room, you'll find a room with Malor the Zelius inside. Kill him, and in the corner you'll see a small chest. Loot this, and inside will be the Medallion of Faith. After that, return to the undead side of Strathholm, near the side entrance, and you'll see a chapel. Inside, an NPC named Aureus will be there. Give the medallion to him, and then you'll be required to kill the final boss of the undead side, which is of course Baron Riven Dare. Kill Baron and you'll be rewarded with the ring, whereas the Cyclopean Band is the same boss as your best in slot bell, the Banfox Sash. So it's going to be Okfar the Breaker, inside the Ring of Law. Alright, so let's talk about weapons. The best is always going to be a one-handed weapon with an offhand. This is due to some of the power provided by certain offhands, but we'll get into that in a second. For your main hand weapon, you'll want to pick up the Blade of the New Moon. This dagger gives you plus 5 to stamina, along with a massive 19 to shadow damage. And as mentioned, the majority of your damage is going to be coming from those shadow damage over time spells. This dagger drops inside of Dire Maul, from the giant demon dog boss Imolfar, inside of Dire Maul West. Now, for offhand, it's a little tricky. There is one item that's best in slot stat wise, which is the Umbral Crystal. Despite its low level, this offhand provides you with stamina and a lot of shadow spell damage. To pair with this offhand, you're also going to want to have not only Skull of Impending Doom, but also Furbolg Medicine Pouch. Skull of Impending Doom is perfect for when facing mages, rogues, or hunters, as you can potentially break crowd control, whereas the Furbolg Medicine Pouch is a must when being focused, as it's a 1k heal over time. So, if you have Skull of Impending Doom off cooldown, and it's good in the situation you're currently in, then make sure you have it equipped. If not, and this and Furbolg Medicine Pouch is on cooldown, then use the Umbral Crystal. To obtain the Skull of Impending Doom, you'll have to partake on a quest chain starting in the Badlands from Falder in the Lost. However, for more information on this, be sure to check out our item spotlight, where as the Furbolg Medicine Pouch can be obtained by reaching Honoured, with the Timbermore Hold, then purchasing the offhand from Gorn One-Eye. Umbral Crystal, on the other hand, is not going to be able to be farmed, as it's a rare bind on equip drop from mobs in the open world, so check your auction house to pick one up cheap. 
And last up before we get onto trinkets is going to be wand. For this, there is only one option, and that's the perfectly itemized wand Storm Ranger. Now, not only does this provide you a gain with high stamina and intellect, but what makes this wand even more powerful is its speed. Coming in at 1.3, this is one of the fastest wands in the game. In PvP, fast wands are what you aim for. Being able to push back casts is a very important aspect of vanilla PvP, and this wand is perfect for that. Storm Rager is from a quest started in Eastern Plaguelands, at Nathanos Blightcaller for Horde and High Lord Bolvar Four Dragon for Alliance. After a short chain, you'll be required to kill a Scarlet Elite named Demetria. Slay her, return back to your quest giver, and you'll be rewarded with Storm Rager. Now, last on this list is going to be trinkets. Now, trinkets in Classic are a little different. There are a huge amount of trinkets you should have on you at all times, and there isn't really any best in slot trinkets you should aim for. Instead, you should be looking to collect as many useful utility trinkets as you can. So, things like Tidal Charm, all of the engineering trinkets, including Netomatic, Frostfire and Shadow Reflectors, Nifty Stopwatch, Carrot on a Stick, Barrel of Peasant Caller, Arena Grandmaster, the list goes on. These trinkets all have very long cooldowns and are all very situational, so make sure you get as many as you can and keep them in your inventory ready to swap around as required. With that in mind however, two trinkets that are going to be good for every single situation are going to be the Briarwood Reed and the newly added class trinket, the Royal Seal of Aldrifralas. Alright then guys, that wraps up our pre-raid PvP best in slot for phase 1.5 for Warlocks. Now we're going to be keeping these up to date with the phases, so make sure to check back once phase 2 hits for an updated best in slot list. And as always, be sure to please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more up to date content. 